For this project, any Category 3 yarn will work, but I used a full skein of Baby Burnout Sport Yarn in Lilac Bouquet, and a quarter skein of Baby Gray and White. As for tools, a 5mm hook, scissors, stitch markers, and a tape measure. There's an optional written pattern that can help out too. Link is in the description if you'd like to grab that and follow along. And watch to the end of the video to find out how to enter this week's giveaway. We're using 6 stitches for this project and they will be as follows. Chain Slip stitch Single crochet Double crochet Treble crochet and herringbone stitch. This tutorial is for a size small, but you can adjust it for your size, and we explain how to in the video, so let's get started. Getting this cardigan started, we're first going to grab our category 3 yarn, make a slip knot. We're going to grab our 5 millimeter hook, and we're going to start off by making a chain that goes from the side of your body in towards the middle of your body, minus 2 inches because we will be having a border that we're going to work on later and it also needs to be in multiples of 4. So for me that's going to be a chain out of 20 or that comes out to about 5.5 inches or 14 centimeters. Now that we have our base chain we're going to block off that last chain. We're going to do a chain up of 1 and then into that loop that we blocked off or the second loop from our hook we're going to be going in with a single crochet. And for this first row, we're just going to be putting one single crochet into every loop that we have, going all the way down our work. But when we get to the last loop, go ahead and stop. I'll meet you guys there because we will be switching out our colors. Now that we've made it all the way down to our last loop on our chain, we will be switching out our colors. So we're going to do that together. So all that is, is inserting our hook into that last loop. We're going to yarn over. Pull through just like how we normally would, but instead of doing a yarn over and pulling through two, we're going to grab our next color and we're just going to place this onto our hook and then we're just going to pull it through those last two loops. And then once when we have that, we're going to cut our base color or our first color. We're going to tie the two tail ends together and then we can get started on the next row. So right before we get started with our next row, I'm just going to show you guys this little swatch of what we have for our front panel. So we are now currently working on row number two, which is going to be a row of herringbone. And I just wanted to bring this back so you guys can see what the color portions are going to look like. So we're just going to have a little white piping along the bottom and then also along the top portion of our detail. And then in the middle, you guys can pick whatever color you guys want for the herringbones, the diamond pattern, and then another herringbone. And then the body is going to be also whatever you guys want, but I picked this very, very pretty variegated yarn. And from here, we're just going to work all the way up until we reach our shoulder. But I just wanted to show you guys what this portion would look like so you guys can pick and choose what colors you guys like. But once when we have this, we're going to go in with the herringbone stitch together. So working on our first row of herringbone, it's going to be fairly simple. We're going to start off by doing a chain out of two. We're going to flip our work. And then from here, we're going to prepare for a, I guess, double crochet, but not really. We're going to yarn over once, and then into that same loop that we have our two chains into, we're going to yarn over, pull through. And then once we get here, we're not going to yarn over. We're going to grab this first loop that we have that's right next to our hook, and we're going to pull this underneath the second loop. You may have to just pull the second loop over the first one. It might be a little bit easier that way. But once we have that, we're going to yarn over and pull through just one. We should have two loops on our hook and then we're gonna yarn over, pull through two. Let's do the next one together. We're gonna do a yarn over, insert our hook into that next loop. We're gonna yarn over, pull through. Once we get here, we're gonna pull that first one underneath our second loop. From here, yarn over, pull through one, yarn over, pull through two. Let's do the next one one more time, just a little bit faster. Yarn over. Insert your hook into that next loop, yarn over, pull through, pull that first loop. Oh, okay, let's get back to there. Pull that first loop underneath that second loop, yarn over, pull through one, yarn over, pull through two. 
as you guys can see everything is starting to slant a little bit which is perfect that's exactly what we wanted so we're just going to keep doing this all the way down once we make it to the end we're actually going to do a chain up of two and do another row of herringbone stitches but i'll meet you guys back just so that we can get that started together So we are back putting one herringbone stitch into every loop that we have into our first row of single crochets and from here we're going to work on another herringbone stitch row so it's going to be exactly the same as the first one all we're going to do is do a chain up of two we're going to flip our work we're going to prepare for i guess a herringbone insert our hook into that first loop yarn over pull through take that first loop slide that underneath the second one we're going to yarn over pull through one yarn over pull through two we're going to keep doing this all the way down so we have just made it down to the end with our second row of herringbone this is what our work should be looking like we have our first row of single crochet second row of herringbone third row of herringbone and now we're going to be doing a few rows of our diamond stitch and that's going to be interesting so let's get that started together but the first row is the easy part that's just going to be a row of single crochet so all we're going to do is do a chain up of one flip our work and then all we're going to do is put one single crochet into every loop that we have going all the way down and then once when we get here i know that in the beginning i said make sure that you're working in multiples of four you do want to still do that but i will say just once when you get to the end of the single crochet row make sure that you're still working in your multiples of four because with the herringbone you could easily add an extra loop or take away an extra loop so just make sure that you're working in with the same amount of loops that you guys started with and then we can get started with our diamond stitch so we have just made it down with our what is this one two three fourth row our fourth row is the first row of our diamond stitch and that was just a row of single crochet going all the way down and then after this we're going to be doing one regular row of double crochet so we're going to start off by doing a chain up of three that counts as a double flip our work prepare for a double and from here put one double crochet into every loop that we have going all the way down okay double crochet all finished up then once when we get here we're going to go in with our diamonds so let's stick together for most of this thing so what we're going to do from here is do a chain up of one we will be flipping our work once when we get here we're going to do a front post treble crochet into the first row of this diamond section that we have so not into the herring bones so we should have from the beginning really quickly single crochet herring bone one herring bone two single crochet double crochet we're going to be working into this single crochet row that we made right here we're actually going to be preparing for a treble crochet and then we're going to do our treble crochet front post into this second single crochet post that we have so we're going to insert our hook behind that single crochet post from here we're going to yarn over pull through and we're going to treble crochet like normal so yarn over pull through two yarn over pull through two yarn over and pull through two and that is one half of our diamond stitch and from here we're going to be doing three single crochet into the next three loops but the way that we do that is we want to make sure that we're not going into that same loop that we're technically just made with our treble crochet so what we're going to do is just look at the previous row skip that one loop that our treble crochet counts as and then from there we're going to go in with three single crochet so there's one two and then three once we have those three single crochets we're going to be doing another front post treble but we're going to be combining two of them together so let's stick with each other for a little bit we're going to yarn over twice that is us preparing for our treble we're going to insert our hook into this same single crochet post that our first front post treble went into that makes the bottom v of the diamond so we're going to insert our hook into that same one we're going to yarn over pull through and then we're going to do the treble just like normal but not yarn over and pull through the last two loops so we're going to yarn over pull through one yarn over pull through two we should have two loops on our hook once when we have these two loops on our hook we're going to yarn over twice again and then we're going to insert our treble crochet and do another front post treble into the single crochet row so where this first front post treble is we're going to count out four loops one two three and we're going to insert our hook into this fourth single crochet 
So insert your hook behind that single crochet, yarn over, pull through, and then from here we're going to be treble crocheting like normal, kind of, because we do have an extra loop, so we're going to yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through. Once when we have three loops on our hook, we're going to yarn over, pull through all three loops, and we have combined this treble from this first diamond and then the first treble from our second diamond that we're about to make. So let's actually do that again. <laughs> we're going to not go into this next loop that we have because the treble crochet that we just made counts as that loop. So we're going to be skipping one and do three single crochet into the next three. There's one. Ooh, let's do that again. Two and three. And then now we're going to do another set of treble crochet two together. So we're going to yarn over twice and then we're going to insert our hook into the same single crochet post that this first side of our diamond is into. So we're going to insert, yarn over, pull through. We're going to yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. We have these two loops on our hook and then once we have those two, we're going to start up our next diamond. So we're going to do a yarn over of two. And then from where this first single crochet post is, we're going to count out for one, two, three, four single crochets. Insert your hook behind that fourth single crochet post and then treble. We're going to yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. We should have three loops on our hook. Once we have that, we're going to yarn over, pull through all three loops, just like that. And now you guys can see we have the bottom of one diamond, the bottom of two diamond, and a half. And so we're just going to do the next one together a little bit more quickly, just so we can kind of get through it, because I know that you guys are doing well. And then we can just get started with the rest. So let's finish off this one and start up the next one, and then I'll let you guys have at it from there. But once when we get here, we will be looking at the previous row, skipping one loop, because the loop that we just made with these two treble crochets counts as this loop. So into the one right after that. Go in with three single crochets. There is one, there is two, and then there is three. From here, we will prepare for a treble. Insert our treble crochet behind the post that we have our first treble crochet post behind. Yarn over, pull through. We're going to yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. We should have two loops on our hook. We're going to prepare for another treble. From here into the single crochet row, we're going to be counting out four single crochets. So there's one, two, three. And then into that fourth, we're going to insert our hook. We're going to yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through two yarn over, pull through two. From here, we should have three loops. We're going to yarn over, pull through all three loops. And that is it. We're actually going to keep doing this all the way down. But once we get to that last treble crochet, we are going to do a little special something or other, I guess, just to make sure that it is pinned down to this last loop that we have. So go ahead and do all of your front post trebles, this entire bottom diamond row. And then once we get to the last one, I will meet you guys back so that we can insert it into the last loop together. So we are back and we just gone all the way down with all of our bottom portions of our diamonds except for that last one. We're going to be doing this one together so that we can pin down that last loop to our work. So once when we get here we're going to do a yarn over of two. That's how we start off all of our trebles and then we should have just a half of a treble right here. So we're going to be going into that same front post that we went into with our previous treble. We're going to yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. We should have two loops left on your hook. Once when we have those two loops, we're going to be inserting our hook into the last loop that we have into the previous row. Once we have that, we're going to yarn over and pull through. We should now have three loops on our hook. But once when we get here, we're going to pull that first loop underneath these next two loops. So we're just going to pull through those two loops and now this last loop is nice and pinned down because if we just went in with a regular treble crochet which we could but it would just kind of be hanging out loosey-goosey we don't quite want that just yet so once when we have that we are all done with our first row of our bottom diamonds and it's looking pretty good I'm actually very excited about this but once when we have that we're going to do a chain up of three that counts as a double crochet. We're going to flip our work and then from here we're just going to go all the way down putting one double crochet into every loop that we have. So we have just gone in with our row of double crochet. Pretty simple. Now we're just going to go in and close off 
these diamond bottoms that we have with diamond tops, I guess. So <laughs> once when we get here, we're going to do a chain up of one, flip our work, and then into the first two loops that we have, we're going to go in with a single crochet into each. So there's one, and then there's two. And this portion is going to be a smidge bit easier because we already have established posts to go into. There's not going to be any real counting for us to do. But once when we get here, we're going to prepare for a treble and then into this front post treble that we have in the previous row. We're going to yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. We will be doing two treble crochets together again. So from here, we're going to yarn over twice, insert your hook just behind this first treble right here, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. Once we have those three loops on our hook, we're going to yarn over, pull through all three loops. And that is our first diamond. It looks so cool. Okay. So once we get here, we are going to skip the loop in the previous row because the loop that we just made counts as that loop. Then we're going to go in with three singles. So here's one, two, three. And then from here, we're going to do another set of two treble crochet together. So yarn over twice. We're going to be going behind the treble crochet post that we have in that bottom diamond row. From here, we're going to yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. Once we have those last two loops on our hook, we're going to pull some extra yarn. We're going to yarn over twice and then just behind this first front post treble crochet, because we could very easily go behind both of these. We're just going to be going behind the first one. We're going to yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through three. And that closes off this diamond. Let's do the next one together. Just cause I'm kind of excited. We're going to skip this next loop and then single crochet into the next three loops. So there's one, two, and three. We're going to prepare for a treble behind this next available front post treble crochet. We're going to go in with a treble. We're going to yarn over, pull through two, pull through two. Once we have three loops on our hook, we're going to yarn over twice, go behind that next front post treble crochet that we have, yarn over, pull through. We're going to yarn over, pull through two, pull through two. Once we have three loops on our hook, we're going to yarn over, pull through all three. And that is it. We're going to continue going all the way down with our tops of our diamond row going all the way down. And then I'll meet you guys back so that we can do our next row together. So we are back and we have just finished going in with our last diamond stitch. And what we're going to do from here is just close off this last row together and then we can work our way up to the next ones. So since this last one is finished up, we're going to take a look at the previous row. We should have three loops left and we're going to be skipping this loop because the loop that we just made with our treble crochets counts as this one. So we're going to do one single crochet and then two. And now our diamond stitches are all done. And then once when we have this, we're going to go back to doing our herringbone. So we're just going to do the first one together. We're going to do a chain up of two, flip our work. We're going to prepare for a herringbone, insert our hook into that next loop, yarn over, pull through. We should have three loops on our hook. And once we get here, we're going to pull that first loop underneath that second loop, just like that. From here, yarn over, pull through one, yarn over, pull through two. And that is our herringbone again. So we're going to do another set of two herringbone stitches. Both rows are exactly the same. So go ahead and go down with herringbone stitches all the way down. Once we make it to the end, do a chain up of two and do herringbone stitches back, but leave the last one because we will be switching out our colors. Okay. So two rows of herringbone stitches almost finished up. We just have the last one to do into this last row <laughs> that we just made, but this is what things are looking like right now. I'm just going to give you guys a quick rundown of what we did. So we have row one, single crochet, row two and three herringbone, row four, single crochet, row five, double crochet, row six, first row of our diamond stitch, row seven, double crochet, row eight, closed off our diamond stitches, row nine, herringbone, row 10, herringbone. So that is where we are currently at. And now we're going to switch out for our same color that we did the bottom piping with, and that is my white color. So we're going to do the herringbone until we get to that last yarn over pull through. So into this last loop that we have, we have just one herringbone left to do. We're going to insert yarn over pull through. We're going to yarn over pull through one, 
yarn over, pull through two. Now at this point, we would yarn over, pull through two, but we will be switching out our colors. So let me grabby grab that color. We're going to insert that onto our hook and pull through. We can now cut our first color, tie the tail ends together, and then get started on this next row, which is just a single crochet row. So I'm going to cut, tie the two tail ends, do a chain up of one, and then single crochet all the way down until we get to that last loop, because we will be switching out our colors again for the body color. So go ahead and single crochet all the way down, and then I'll meet you guys back once we reach that last loop. Alright, so we have made it down with our piping color single crochet row. We just have one more loop left to go into, and we will be switching out our color for the body color. So what we're going to do is go into that last loop. We're going to yarn over, pull through. We would normally yarn over, pull through to close off the single crochet, but we will not because we're switching out our colors. So we're going to grab this next color and just pull it through those two loops that we have on our hook already. Cut the first color, which is my white, and then we will tie the tail ends together and then we can get started with our modified sedge stitch. We have just cut our base color, tied our two tail ends together, and now we will be going in with our modified sedge stitch. I know so far this piece has been riddled with stitches new and old, but this is what we have come up with. So deal with this for now, please and thank you. But once when we get here, what we're going to do is do a chain up of one flip our work and then our modified stitch stitch is actually fairly easy we're first going to be going into this first loop that we have the one that our chain up one is in with a single crochet once when we have that we're going to be doing a double crochet into that same loop so we're going to prepare for a double and then insert it into that same loop that our single crochet just went into and then do a regular single or er, regular single regular double crochet and this is what we should have so far and I know what you guys are thinking, we're increasing, but no, because we're actually going to be skipping this next loop. So we're going to skip this loop and then into this next loop that we have. So I guess the third one, we're going to go in with another set of single and double into that same loop. And that is basically the entire sedge stitch, but let's do a couple together really quick. We're going to go in with a single crochet and then into that same loop, a double crochet. And that is our next one. From here, we're always going to be skipping one loop into the next single crochet and double into that same loop. Let's do one more together and then we'll do the sedge stitches all the way to the end and then we'll start up the next row together. So we're going to skip up this next loop, go into the loop right after that with a single and a double all into that same loop. And we're going to keep doing this all the way down. Once we make it to the end, we're going to chain up one, flip our work, and then do more modified sedge stitches, but instead of going into that first loop, we're actually going to be going into the loop right after that. So I'll meet you guys back just to give you guys a visual on which loop to go into. We have just made it down with our first row of sedge stitches. We're going to do a chain up of one, flip our work, and then instead of going into this first loop, like the one that we first went into for this first row of sedge stitches that we went into, we're actually going to be skipping that one and then going into the loop after that with the same pattern so single and double crochet all into the same loop from there skip one loop and then single and double into the next and this is basically it we're going to keep going down back and forth just like this until we get a certain height that we want this all depends on how long you guys want your front panel to be but we're going to keep going until we have the height that we want that will actually be tall enough to give us our pockets and i already have one of them slightly done so i'm just going to show you guys where it is and i'll meet you guys back so that we can do our pocket slit and then go up with the rest okay so i have just a little bit of both of my front panels done this is one that we're currently working on but i just wanted to show you guys what we're doing until we get to our slit but as you guys can see i already have my pocket slit right up in here so we're just going to do regular sledge stitches all the way up until we get to the height that we want our pocket to be at and I have measured mine all the way from the bottom up to where I want the pocket to be. And that is about six inches or 15 centimeters. Or if you guys are following along with the pattern, that is a total of 24 rows. And then we're going to go in with this little slit for the pocket. But I'll meet you guys back once when I get to my pocket height, I guess, <laughs> that we want to get to. And then I'll show you guys how to do the pocket from there. So we're back and we have our total from the bottom all the way up to where we're at, our total of 
26 rows or 6 inches or 15 centimeters but this is all going to be dependent on you guys but this is just the length that I want so that I can add in my pockets but once when we get here we're actually going to need to do just a little bit of measuring we're going to want to figure out and see where we want our pockets to be and I have already figured mine out I'm going to go in with four single crochet do a chain that goes across 12 stitches and then go in with the last little bit of four single crochets but this is just for me but let me just go in with my stitch markers so that there's a better visual and then we can get started from there so we now have our stitch markers into the spot where we want our slits to be and just to let you guys know from one stitch marker to the next this is going to be our slit and that is a total of let me look at my notes really quick a total of three and a half inches or nine centimeters from stitch marker to stitch marker but this can be as wide or as little as you guys want it's all dependent on you or you guys don't have to do a pocket at all you guys can just keep going in with your modified sled stitches and call it a day but since i do like pockets i am going to start off by doing a chain up of one we're going to flip our work and this row is going to be a row of single crochets so all we're going to do is go in with single crochets all the way up until we hit our stitch marker once we hit that we can take out our stitch marker we're at our first one now and then from here i'm going to count out my loops even though i know it's already 12 but i'm going to count 1 2 3 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 12. once when we have that 12 or however many loops you guys have we're going to make a chain of that same number count so i had 12 loops so i'm going to do a chain of 12. And then once when we have our 12, we're going to count out the 12 loops in our base. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. And then into the loop right after the 12th, we're going to go in with single crochets until we reach the end. So here's 1, 2, 3, and then 4. And then now that we have our row of single crochets, we can go back into doing our modified sledge stitches. So let's just do the first one together. We're going to do a chain up of 1 flip our work and then into that first loop we're going to insert our hook with a single crochet into that same loop go in with a double once we have that skip one loop go in with a single into the same loop with a double and then we're going to keep doing this all the way down including over the chain that we have and then from here we're actually just going to keep going back and forth with our modified sledge stitches all the way up until this hits our shoulder so go ahead and just keep doing this. I'll meet you guys back in just a little bit so that we can get started on the rest. So we are back and we have just finished up going all the way up with the length of our cardigan. And from the bottom all the way up until the top where I finished, I have a total of 76 rows and that comes out to about 26 inches or 66 centimeters. And as you guys can see, I didn't close off this last stitch that we have at the very end because along this end, we're actually going to be doing our inner border for the front panel so once when we get here we're going to be switching out for whatever color you guys want for the inner border i'm going to be switching out for my white and then from there we can go in with our first row so switching out our colors is going to remain the same we're just going to place that next color yarn onto our hook and pull through those two loops we are going to cut the original color that we were just working with tie the tail ends and then we can now start working along the length of what we have Once when we get here, for this first front panel that we're working on, whatever end that we end on, we can just continue to go in using that side with our front border. So what we're going to do is go in with a single crochet. So all we're going to do is chain up one and then into this first loop that we have, which is a side double, we're going to go in with two single crochet. So there is one. And then there's two once when we have those two we're going to skip over to this next big loop that we have and put two single crochet into there as well and we're basically just going to keep doing this all the way down the length of what we have including the bottom portion that has our herringbone stitches and our diamond stitches we're just going to put single crochets into each loop going all the way down and then once we have that we can work our way back up with our ribbing so i'll meet you guys back once when we have gone all the way down the side Now that we've made it all the way down to the end with our row of single crochets, we're now going to be working in with our 
double crochets because that's going to help us prep for our row after this which is going to be front and back post double crochets so let's just get into this together we're first going to go in with a chain up of three that counts as a double we're going to flip our work and then from here super duper easy we're just going to go in putting one double crochet into every loop that we have going all the way back down our length once we make it to the end we'll meet each other together so that we can do our next row We are at the end of our row of regular double crochet going all the way down the side and this next row we're going to be going in with front and back post double crochets so that's going to be fairly simple what we're going to do is do a chain up of three that counts as a double crochet from here we're going to flip our work and then the first post that we're going to be going into we're going to be doing a front post double crochet so all that is is preparing for a double crochet and then instead of going in through these top loops that we usually go into we're actually going to be going behind these posts that we left for ourselves that's basically just the double crochet portion in the previous row so from here all we're going to do is double crochet like normal so we're going to pull through pull through two pull through two and this is our front post double crochet once when we have that we're going to be going in with our back post so we're going to prepare for a double crochet and this back post we're going to be inserting our hook behind our work but over this next post that we have and then through the next loop from here we're going to yarn over pull through and then double crochet again like normal so yarn over pull through two yarn over pull through two let's do one more set of front and back post double crochets together we're going to prepare for a front post double crochet into this next post that we have we're going to be inserting our hook behind the post and then bringing it through the other side of our gap and then finishing it off with a regular double crochet let's do it one more back post so prepare for a double crochet go behind our work we're going to bring our hook over this next post that we have and then through the next loop yarn over pull through pull through two pull through two and we have front and back post double crochets this is going to give us some really good ribbing for this front portion and then once we make it all the way to the end I will meet you guys back We just made it down doing our first row of front and back post double crochets and we're going to do another row of front and back post double crochets and this is going to be exactly the same thing that we did in the previous row so we're going to get started on that together. We're going to start off by doing a chain up of three that counts as a double crochet. We are going to flip our work and then once we flip it into this first double crochet post that we have in the previous row we're just going to do whatever post we have in that row. So this first one that we have is a front post single crochet so I'm going to do a front post on top of there so we're going to yarn over insert our hook behind that post and then go in with a regular double crochet and we're just going to do the next post together as well the next is a back post so we're going to prepare for a double crochet insert our hook behind our work and over that post and then we're going to double crochet like normal and keep going all the way down with front and back post double crochets we are back and we have just finished up doing our front border and this is what our piece should look like so far. I'm going to end my front border here so I'm going to cut and tie and then from here I'm going to do the exact same thing that we did over here up the length and then once we get here I'm going to meet you guys back so that we can do the border together. It's going to be the exact same thing I just want to make sure that we're going in on the correct side. So I will meet you guys back once when we have this entire sequence of our herringbone, diamond herringbone and then our modified sledge stitches with our pocket all the way up all that's going to be exactly the same so go ahead and do that we'll be back we've just finished up going in with our other front panel and now we're going to want to cut and tie where we ended and then we're going to insert our hook into this other side so that we can do the other front panel for the border right here but what we're going to do is actually just to double check that we're making sure we're putting it into the right corner is look at where the diamond stitches are facing up because this is obviously going to be the outside and we're going to take a look at the other one that we have as well because we want these to be facing up. We need the other one to mirror it so all we're going to do is just attach it to this other corner and then go in with this side of our front border together. So since we've ended at this corner we're going to chain up one and cut, grab our front border color, make a slip knot we're going to be inserting our hook into the opposite corner from where we just cut 
insert our yarn onto our hook, pull through, and then from here it's going to be the exact same way that we did the front border on the other side. So we're going to go in with a row of single crochet going all the way down. Once we make it to the end, do a chain up of three, do regular double crochets back, and then do two rows of front and back post double crochets from there. And then once when we have that, go ahead and cut and tie and we can get started on the bottom border. So we're back and we have just finished up doing both of our front panels side borders. And now we can start going in with the bottom border as you guys can see. I already have one of mine done and it's going to be fairly simple. We just need to do the same thing on the other side. So the first thing that we're going to need to do is just go in with a row of single crochet. So we're going to turn our work. We're going to grab our bottom border color, insert our hook into that corner, and from here we're going to just go across the row of single crochet. So we're going to start off by going into these side double crochets first. So the way that we do that is we're going to pull our yarn through our work, do a chain up of one to secure, and then into this first side double we're going to be going in with two single crochets. There is one then one more into that same side double. There is two. And then same thing into the next. Here is one. And then also here is two. And since we're so close to the regular loops, we're just going to stick with each other. Put two into this next side double as well. And then once when we get here, we're actually just going to go into this first row that we have of our single crochet that we did for our side panel. So that's just going to be a single single crochet. And then from here, these are just all regular loops. So we can just go in with one single crochet into each of those loops. And then go ahead and keep doing this all the way down. Now that we've made it all the way down with our row of single crochet, now we can start going in with the length of our bottom border. So all that's going to be is about 2 inches or 5 centimeters, so that comes out to about 6 chains. Once when we have that, we're going to block off that last chain, do a chain up of three that counts as a double crochet, prepare for a double crochet, insert our hook into that loop that we blocked off or the fourth loop from our hook with just one double crochet. And then once we have that we're going to turn our work and then go ahead and put one double crochet into every loop that we have going back down our chain and then I'll meet you guys back so that we can connect it into the base together. We've made it all the way down with our row of double crochets and now we're just going to connect into that base. So what we're going to do is count out the next two available loops. So here is one and then here is two. We're going to slip stitch into that second loop to close off this first double crochet row. And that's that. And then once we have that we're going to do two slip stitches up the next two loops to work our way up to the next row. So there's one and then there's two-ish. There we go. From there we're going to flip our work. And then from here we're just going to be going in with back loop double crochets. Same thing, just in through the back loop. So we're going to prepare for a double crochet. And then we're going to insert our hook in through that first back loop with a regular double crochet. And we're doing this to get some ribbing, but we're just going to keep doing this all the way down. Once we reach the end, we're going to do a chain up of three, flip our work. Once when we get back to the base, we're going to be slip stitching into the second available loop that we have in our base to close off that row. And then to work our way up to the next row, we are going to slip stitch up the next two loops. And then we're going to keep going back and forth just like that until we don't have any more loops left to go into. And then once when you've done one, go ahead and do the same thing on the other side. So we are back and we have just finished up going in with our bottom border for both of our front panels that we have and we are actually all finished up with this and next we can go in with our back portion. And the first thing that we're going to need to do with the back is actually measure out and see how long we need it to be. So the easiest way to do that is actually to put these two panels up to ourselves where they would lay on us. And then from here we're going to measure from this corner all the way across, across your neck, all the way to this other corner and then we're going to be making a chain that comes out to that length. Remembering that the chain does need to be in multiples of four as well. And just to let you guys know, I have a total of 18 inches or 46 centimeters, and that comes out to about 68 chains. So I'm gonna go ahead and make that chain and then I'll meet you guys back. And now that we have our chain, what we're gonna do is block off that last chain, do a chain up of one, and then into that chain that we blocked off or the second chain from our hook, 
we're going to be going in with one single crochet into every single loop that we have going all the way back down once we make it over to the last loop that we have we'll meet each other back because we will be switching out our colors but this is basically going to be exactly the same way that we did the front panels i'm just going to do the first few rows with you guys and i'll let you guys have at it from there now that we've made it all the way down with our first row of single crochets we should have just one loop left because we are going to be switching out our colors together so in order to do that we're going to be inserting our hook into that last loop we're going to yarn over and pull through once when we have that we are going to grab our secondary color place that onto our hook pull through both of those loops once we have that we are going to cut the base color tie the two tail ends together and then we'll get started on the first stitch that we have in the herringbone rows and then I'll let you guys go from there now that our secondary color is nice and snug all tied in we are ready to get started with our next row which is our herringbone stitches so let's just do the first one together to work our way up to the herringbone stitch row we're going to chain up two from there we're going to flip our work and we're going to prepare for a herringbone stitch we're going to insert our hook into that first loop we're going to yarn over and pull through once we have three loops on our hook we're going to take our first loop and pull that underneath our second loop just like so once we have that we're going to yarn over pull through that first loop yarn over pull through two loops and we're going to keep doing this all the way down until we don't have any more loops left from there we're going to do a chain up of two and then do one more row of herringbone stitches and then just like in the front we're going to be going in with our diamond stitch rows so i'll meet you guys back so that we can do those rows together so we just went in with our two rows of herringbone stitches and now we're going to get started on the diamond pattern and the first row that we need to do for the diamond pattern is a very simple row of single crochets so really quickly all we're going to do is do a chain up of one we're going to flip our work and then into every loop that we have we're just going to be putting one single crochet once we make it to the end we're going to do a chain up of three and then we will have a row of double crochets to do just like how we did for the diamond stitch so go down with single crochets chain up three work our way back with double crochets and then once we're ready to actually start going in with the diamond portion i will meet you guys back We've just made our way to the end of our double crochet row the last time i saw you guys we were working on our single crochet row we did a chain up of three and then worked our way back down with regular double crochet rows and now we can get started with doing the diamond design so what we're going to do from here is going to be the same way we did the front we're just going to do the first bit together we're going to do a chain up of one flip our work we're going to automatically prepare for a treble crochet and then into the second single crochet post that we had in that single crochet row that we did we're going to go in with a front post treble crochet so we're going to insert our hook yarn over pull through yarn over pull through two yarn over pull through two yarn over pull through the last two and from here we're going to skip one loop that we have in the previous row go into the next three loops with one single crochet in each so there's one single crochet two and then three once we get here we're going to prepare for another treble crochet but remembering that this is going to be a treble crochet that we combine with the other bottom portion of the diamond on the other side so we're going to prepare for a treble crochet insert our hook into that same single crochet post that we just put our previous treble crochet into we're going to yarn over pull through yarn over pull through two yarn over pull through two once when we only have two loops on our hook we're going to yarn over twice again and then from that single crochet post that we just went into we're going to count out four single crochets here's one two three and then four into that fourth single crochet we're going to be going in with a front post treble crochet so we're going to yarn over pull through yarn over pull through two yarn over pull through two once when we only have three loops left on our hook we're going to yarn over pull through all three loops and then from here we're going to skip one loop that we have in the previous row do three single crochets two three and then from here we're going to do another front post treble crochet that is combining the end of this diamond to the beginning of the next diamond and we're going to continue doing that all the way down once we get to our last front post treble crochet i'll meet you guys back just to remind you guys how to connect it into the previous row and then we can do the rows after that we've made our way all the way down with our row of 
the bottom half of our diamonds. We have this last half to go into, but we are going to do this a little bit differently, but the same way that we did it the first time. So what we're going to do from here is prepare for a treble crochet, insert our hook into that front post single that we just went into. We're going to yarn over, pull through, pull through two, pull through two. Once we have two loops on our hook, we're going to insert our hook into that last loop. From here, we're going to yarn over, pull through. Once we only have three loops left on our hook, we're going to take that first loop and then pull it underneath the other two loops. And now this row is officially closed off and we're ready to go into the next one, which is just a row of double crochets. So we're going to do a chain up of three, flip our work, prepare for a double crochet, and put one regular double crochet into every loop that we have going back down our work. We just made it all the way down with our row of double crochets and now we need to close off the tops of our diamond stitches. So what we're going to do is a chain up of one, flip our work and then into the first two loops we're going to be putting one single crochet into each. So there's one, there's two. From here we're going to do a front post treble crochet that combines two of them together so that we can close off this first diamond. So what this is going to be is yarn over twice that counts as a treble crochet. We're going to insert our hook behind the treble crochet that we had in the previous row. Yarn over, pull through, pull through two, pull through two. We should have two loops left on our hook. Once we have that, we're going to yarn over twice and then go into this next front post treble crochet that we have in the previous row, making sure that we're only going in through one side and not through both of these loops that we have. We're gonna yarn over pull through, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. Once we only have three loops left, we're going to yarn over, pull through all three loops. And then in order to work our way over to the next diamond, we're going to skip one loop that we have in the previous row, insert our hook into the next one with one, two, three single crochet. And then we're going to do another set of treble crocheting to treble crochets together. And we're going to keep doing this all the way down. We've just finished up doing all of our diamond stitches and the next thing that we're going to have to do is go in with our herringbone stitches just like how we did on the bottom and also in the front. So I'm just going to start that off with you guys and let you guys go from there. We're going to do a chain up of two and flip our work and doing a herringbone together we're going to prepare for a herringbone so just yarn over, insert your hook, yarn over, pull through. From here we're going to pull that first loop underneath our second loop. And then from here, we're going to yarn over, pull through one, yarn over, pull through two. And then that is our herringbone stitch. We're going to continue going down with this pattern all the way down this row. Once we don't have any more loops left, we're going to do a chain up of two, flip our work, and then do herringbone stitches coming all the way back down, but leaving the last one so that we can do it together so that we can switch out our colors to our piping color, which is our white, and then go in with the body after that. We are back and we have just finished up doing both of our herringbone stitch rows. So right after we did our diamond rows, we did a chain up of two, did herringbones going down one direction. Once we got down to the end, we did a chain up of two and did herringbones back. And we just have one more loop left to go into and we left that last loop so that we can do it together because we will be switching out our colors again. So what we're going to do is yarn over, insert our hook into that last loop, yarn over, pull through. From here, we're going to pull that first loop underneath our second loop. We should have two loops on our hook. We're going to yarn over, pull through that first loop. Once when we just have these two loops left, we're going to grab our next color, insert that onto our hook, and then pull that color through the two loops that was on our hook. From here, cut the base color and tie the two tail ends together. And once when you have that, do a chain up of one. And then this next row is going to be a row of single crochets going all the way down. But once we make it to the end, we will be switching out for our body color, which is our variegated color. So once when we get to the end, the very last loop, go ahead and switch out your colors and then I'll meet you guys back so that we can do the modified sedge stitch together. And then I'll let you guys do the rest on your own. We've made it to the end of our single crochet row with our piping color and we already switched out for our body color. And then the only thing that we're going to do from here all the way up until we have the same height 
as we have for the front panel is modified sedge stitches so we're just going to do the first few together so really quickly we're going to do a chain up of one we will flip our work and then into that same loop that our chain up of one is in we're going to go in with one single crochet then also go in with a double crochet so those two stitches into one loop once when we have that we are going to skip one loop go into the loop after that with again one single and then one double and that's it we're going to keep doing this all the way down once we make it to the end chain up one then do the same stitches going all the way back down and this height is going to be the same height that we have for the front panels that we have so however many rows you guys have make sure that it's even then i'll meet you guys back once when we have all of this done we are back and we have just finished up going in with the length of our back portion and the next thing we're going to do is is go in with a bottom border just like how we did for the front portion so all that is is inserting our hook into one of the corners it doesn't matter which one inserting our bottom border color onto our hook and pull through and then however many chains you guys made for your front panels you're going to make the same amount of chains for your back panel so i made a chain out of six that came out to about two inches or five centimeters so i'm going to pull my yarn through and then start off by making a chain of that same number now that we have our chain this is going to be exactly the same way that we did the front one so we're just going to start this off together we're going to block off that last chain do a chain out of three we're going to prepare for a double crochet then into that loop that we blocked off or the fourth loop from our hook we're going to go in with one double crochet once when we have that one we're going to be inserting our hook into that next loop with one double crochet we're going to keep doing this all the way down our chain until we get to the base we're going to slip stitch into the base to close off this row and then work our way up to the next row after that together as well so now that we've gone down our chain putting one double crochet into every loop that we had we're going to slip stitch it into the base so how we do that is we're going to count up the next two available loops so here's one here's two we're going to be inserting our hook into that second loop with a slip stitch to close off this first row that we just made for ourselves and then once we have that we're going to be slip stitching up the next two loops after that so that we can start up the next row once we have that we're going to be flipping our work and then into every back loop that we have we're going to be putting one double crochet so prepare for a double insert your hook into that back loop with a double crochet and we're going to keep doing this all the way down until we make it to the end once we get to the end we're going to do a chain up of three flip our work and do more back loop double crochets going in towards the base once we get to the base we're going to slip stitch into the second available loop that we have to close off that row and then in order to work our way up to the next row we're going to slip stitch up the next two loops flip our work and then do more back loop double crochets go ahead and keep doing that all the way along the bottom of our back piece and then i'll meet you guys back once when we have cut and tied so the bottom border along the back panel is all finished up and the next thing that we're going to have to do is actually connect the back panel to the front panel now so how we're going to do that is grab one of our front panels one of mine is already attached so i'm just going to show you guys how to do this other one but i have two quick tips to tell you guys before we actually get started when we're actually placing our front panel onto our back panel we're going to want to make sure that our diamond stitch is facing each other because once we flip it inside out we want that to be showing along the outside so the way that my back panel is laying my diamond stitches are facing up as you guys can see this is how I did the first one the diamond stitches is facing each other so we're going to do the same thing for this panel that we're about to attach together and then the second tip that I have is actually making sure that the border that we did along one side of our front panel is facing the inside because this is going to be where your body is the side of our front panel and back panel that has nothing on it that's going to be the side that we connect to each other but other than that we are ready to go in with our seam so we're going to start off with doing the shoulder first because that's the easiest part what we're going to do is grab the front panel insert our hook into that corner loop we're going to grab the back panel and then we're also going to be inserting our hook into that corner loop as well once we have that we're going to be taking our body color we're going to make a slip knot 
insert that onto our hook. And from here, we're just going to go all the way across with a row of single crochet, making sure we're going in through the front and the back panel at the same time. So how we're going to start this off is by pulling our working yarn through the two loops that we just inserted our hook into. Once when we have that, we can do a chain up of one that's too secure in our work so that we can go in with our single crochet. And now is also an opportune time to weave in some of our ends so that we don't have as many to weave in once we go in later. But how we're going to do that is first, we're going to insert our hook into the first available loop that we have in the front panel. And then also into the next available loop that we have in the back panel. Once when we have that, if you guys would like to weave in your ends with me, you guys are going to take all these tail ends that we have and just place it on top of the loops that we're working into. Once when we have that, we're going to single crochet like normal. So we're going to yarn over, pull through the first loop, yarn over, pull through two. And that is our first single crochet. And also you guys can see that our tail ends are nicely woven into the middle of this single crochet. So let's do that again. Into the first available loop that we have into the front panel. And then also, if I can find it, into the first available loop that we have in the back panel, insert our hook into there, grab our tails, and just place that over the loops that we're working into, and single crochet like normal. And that is it. We're going to keep doing this all the way down except once when we get to the end of our front panel, we do have some side double crochets to go into. So we're gonna meet each other back so that we can do those together, but they're gonna be fairly simple. Now that we've made our way down to our side panel that we have that's attached to our front panel, what we're gonna do is just go in with some single crochets into each of these side double crochets. But right before we do that, we do have one single crochet row in between, so we're just gonna find any loop that is somewhere within that single crochet row. We're gonna insert it in through there, and then also in through the next available back loop, we're gonna single crochet. And now we can go into our side double crochets. So into each side double crochet, we typically do two single crochets. So we're gonna do that still. We're going to insert our hook into this first side double, then also into the next available loop that we have into the back loop. Here's our first single crochet, and then we're gonna be going into that same side double that we just went into because we do need two single crochets into there. So here's our second one into this first side double. And then also insert your hook into the next available loop in the back loop, in the back panel, and then single crochet. And we are going to keep doing this until we don't have any more loops left to go into into the front panel. Once we make it to the end, go ahead and cut and tie. And now that our shoulder chunk is all connected, we can go in with the same seam that we just did, but along the sides going all the way up. But the first thing we're gonna need to do is figure out how wide we want our armhole to be. I have tried mine on and I've inserted my stitch marker. And the spot that I have my stitch marker is actually from the top down about seven and a half inches or 19 centimeters. So you guys can adjust from there, but go ahead and insert your stitch marker. And then once we have that, we can go in with our side seam but the only difference from the top is that we actually have different color blocks along the bottom so wherever you have your first color you're going to go in with a single crochet seaming up the sides with that first color same thing with the second color and then with the body color so i'm going to be starting off with my white my gray and then with my variegated color yarn so we're just going to stick with each other to show you guys where we're going to be switching out So to start off doing our seam, we're going to be inserting our hook into this corner loop that we have into the front panel, and also into the corner loop that we have into the back panel. Once we have that, we're going to take our same colored yarn, insert that onto our hook, pull that. From here, we're going to pull through both loops on our hook, and then we're gonna chain up one. And from here, we're going to seam up the sides just the same way that we did the shoulder. We're going to be single crocheting, making sure that we're going in through the front panel and the back panel at the same time. And we're going to keep doing this until we get to our next color.
So I've just done my last single crochet for this first color. What we're going to do is do a chain up of one and cut. And next we're going to be switching out for our next color. We're just going to make a slip knot. And we're going to be inserting our hook into the first loop that we have into the front panel and also into the back panel. And to start this off, since we are at our second section, we did start off with some herringbone stitches. So we're going to be going in with two single crochets into each of those side doubles or side half doubles that we made for ourselves. And then if we meet a single crochet, then we're going to be putting just one single crochet into there as well. So let's just get on with this portion as well. And now that we're at our last loop for our second color or my gray, we're going to switch out just one more time. So we're going to do a chain up of one and then cut and let's grab our last color and then I'll let you guys go from there. Just going to be switching out our colors one more time. So we're going to grab our body color. We're going to insert our hook into that first loop, making sure we're going in through the front and the back panel at the same time. Insert our yarn onto our hook pull through. From there we're going to do a chain up of one and then just go in from there and then keep doing this all the way up until you guys reach your stitch marker. Once when you reach your stitch marker do a chain up of one and cut and then do the same thing that you guys did here on the other side. So we're back and we have just seamed up the shoulders and the sides and I have gone in with just a little bit of my sleeve on this side so I'm just going to do this other side with you guys and it's going to be fairly simple. We're first going to be going into our armhole that we made for ourselves with a row of single crochet but remembering that it does need to be in multiples of four because of our diamond stitch that we will be doing at the end of our sleeve. So when you guys go in just make sure to either add or subtract a couple so that it can even out the way that we need it to. But just to show you guys where we're getting started, I will insert my hook into one of the loops that's closest to the side seam that we have right here. And from here, we're going to grab our same body color yarn, make a slip knot, insert that onto my hook, and pull through. Once when we have that, we're going to do a chain up of one. And then we're going to have a bunch of side double crochets and side single crochets and we're just going to be going in. I'm not going to tell you guys to put two into each side double because it may vary depending on what you guys need. But go ahead and just go all the way around making sure that you guys have multiples of four. Once you guys reach the end we're going to connect into this first loop that we just made for ourselves with a slip stitch. But don't cut and tie because we're just going to go back in with our modified sedge stitch for our sleeve. So I've just made it all the way around with our row of single crochet, making sure we had loops that are in multiples of four. And then once when we have that, we're going to be going in with our modified sedge stitch, which is exactly the same that we did the body. So what we're going to do is just to start this off, we're going to do a chain up of one into that first loop. We're going to put one single crochet and then a double. Once we have that, skip one loop into the third, one single crochet crochet one single crochet and then a double into that third loop and we're going to keep doing that all the way down once when we make it down to our last loop or making sure that we have the right amount of loops on top making sure that there's multiples of four we actually aren't going to connect into the side we're just going to keep going back and forth like this until we have a sleeve length that we want because we are going to make this three quarter length sleeves but we are also going to be adding this chunk at the bottom as well. So make sure you keep that in mind and we're also going to be adding a cuff. So basically this entire chunk at the bottom. So I'm just going to be going back and forth with my modified sedge stitches until I have a total of about 7 inches or 18 centimeters and that's roughly 20 rows. So I'm going to do that, meet you guys back so that we can seam up this sedge stitch section that we just did and then we'll go in at the end with the same pattern that we did down here. So the two herringbone, diamond, two herringbone, and then a cuff. And then we can get started on the other sleeve and then the pockets from there. 
So we just got finished up with our first row of our modified sedge stitch and we're not going to do anything different. I just wanted to remind you guys that we aren't going to be connecting and then going into the rounds. All we're going to do is do a chain up of one. We're going to flip our work and then do more modified sedge stitches going this way. So we're going to have an opening along the bottom. We're just going to do the first sedge stitch together. So into the second loop that we have. So we're going to skip this first loop right here into that second loop. One single, one double skip one loop one single one double into the next and keep going back and forth just like this until you guys get the desired length that you guys need so we've just made our way all the way down with our sleeve and this goes almost to our elbow but we need a decent amount so that we can go in with our detail right after this but once we get here we are going to seam up what we have right here at the bottom and that's going to be pretty simple all we're going to do is insert our hook into our working yarn since we didn't cut it yet insert it into the corner that we have on the other side of our sleeve we're going to yarn over and pull through and then once we have this we're going to put in single crochets into each of these loops going all the way down once we make it to the end we are going to be slip stitching into the side seam just to make sure that we have eliminated all possible gaps but let's just do the first set of single crochets together this first set we're going to be going into this side double crochet row so we're going to be inserting our hook into the first side double crochet next to our hook and also into the next side double crochet that we have on the back side and we're going to single crochet and then we're just going to do this all the way down until we don't have any more loops left to go into and then i'll meet you guys back so that we can slip stitch it into the seam together now that we've gone all the way down with our row of single crochet, we don't have any more loops left to go into into our sleeve. What we're going to do is insert our hook into the first loop that we have right here for our side seam. And from here, we're going to just yarn over, pull through everything with a slip stitch. From here, yarn over, pull through. Once we have that, go ahead and cut your work. So we've just finished up seaming up our sleeve and we are about to go in with the bottom detail that we have for our sleeve just like how I already have over here. And this detail is actually going to be exactly the same as we have for the body portions, both the front and the back panel. So we're just going to very vaguely go through it together and then we'll get started on the cuff pocket and then we'll be all done. But once when we are all done seaming up our sleeve the first thing that we're going to want to do is just go in with our herringbone stitches so we'll do the first one together just as a really quick refresher we're going to be inserting our hook into any one of these loops inserting our detail color onto our hook pull through from here we're going to do a chain up of two and then we're going to go in with our herringbone which is yarn over insert into that next loop yarn over pull through we're going to pull that first loop underneath that second loop we should have two loops on the hook from there we're going to yarn over pull through one and we're almost done yarn over pull through two and that is our first herringbone and we're going to keep doing that all the way around once we reach the end we will be slip stitching into the second chain that we just made for ourselves and then we're going to do a chain up of two and then we're actually going to be flipping our work and then working in the opposite direction that we just came from so i'll meet you guys back once when we are done with this row so that we can start off that row together now that we've made our way all the way around with our first row of herringbone stitches, we have slip stitched into that second chain that we have. And once we get here, we're going to do a chain up of two, and then instead of working in the same direction that we were already going, we're going to be flipping our work and then working in the direction that we just came from so that we can keep up with this herringbone stitch pattern and then also with the detail pattern that we have to make sure that the diamonds actually face outward as well. So now that we have this, go ahead and just do a row of herringbone stitches going all the way around, and then I'll meet you guys back. We've just finished up going in with our two herringbone stitch rows, and we have already connected with a slip stitch. The next row we're going to do is a regular single crochet row because we will be starting up with our diamond stitches. So all that is is do a chain up of one. We are still going to be flipping our work so that we don't get confused. And then we're going to go in with a row of single crochet putting one single crochet into every loop going all the way back around once we meet this first loop that we made for ourselves we're going to slip stitch into that loop do a chain up of three flip our work and then work back the opposite way that we just came from with a row of double crochets 
Once we make it to the end of there, we are going to get started on the diamond stitches together. So a row of single, once we make it to the end, chain up one, flip your work, and then a row of double, and then I'll meet you guys back. We're back and we just went in with a row of single crochet, flipped our work, and then a row of double crochet, and now we're ready to go in with our row of diamonds, and this is exactly the same way that we did the front, so we're just gonna get this started together. What we're gonna do from here is do a chain up of one, we're going to prepare for a treble crochet, and then from here we're going to follow this chain up of one line all the way down until our single crochet row that we just did in the previous clip, and then we're going to count one, two, wait, here, one, two single crochets, and then we're going to insert our hook behind that post, and then we're going to do a front post treble crochet. Once when we have that, we're gonna be skipping one loop that we have in the previous row, and then single crocheting into the next three loops. So there's one, two, and three. And then from here, we're gonna do another front post treble crochet, but this is going to be two front post treble crochets together. So let's get that started. We're going to prepare for a treble, insert our hook into that same single crochet post that we just went into for that first one that we went into. Just like that, we're gonna yarn over, pull through. Yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. We should have two loops on our hook left. From here, we're gonna yarn over twice again and count out four loops. Here's one, two, three, four single crochets. Into that fourth single crochet post, we're going to insert our hook behind that fourth single crochet post and go in with a treble crochet. So we're gonna yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. Once when we have those three loops on our hook, we're gonna yarn over, pull through all three. And then once we have that, we're going to skip the next loop that we have into the previous row and then into the loop right after that, we're gonna go in with three single crochets and then we're gonna do the same thing that we just did here, going all the way around. Once we made it all the way around, I'll meet you guys back so that we can do the rest of this cuff. We made it all the way around with the bottom half of our diamond stitch rows. The next row we're gonna be going into is just a row of double crochet. So we're going to do our chain up of three we will still be flipping our work and then just put one double crochet into every loop going all the way around our row of double crochet is all finished up and now what we're going to do from here is close off the tops of our diamond stitches so we're going to do our chain up of one we are still flipping our work and then we're going to close off this diamond stitch together so we're going to single crochet into those first two loops that we have. Once we have that, we're going to do another set of treble crocheting two together. So we're going to prepare for a treble, insert our hook behind the front post treble that we did in one of the previous rows. We're gonna yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. We should have two loops on our hook. From here, we're gonna yarn over twice again, insert it behind this next front post treble that we have, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. We should have three loops on our hook. Once we have that, we're gonna yarn over, pull through all three. And then from here, we're gonna skip the next available loop that we have in the previous row, and then put three single crochets into the next three loops. We're gonna keep doing this all the way around. Once when we make it to the end, we are going to be doing a chain up of two. We're still gonna flip our work and then do two rows of herringbone stitches after that. I know that you guys already know how to do it, so we're not gonna do it together. But once when we have this entire sequence done, we'll meet each other back so that we can finish up the cuff together. So we're back and we just finished up doing the bottom detail of our sleeve. And now we can start going in with our cuff. And the first row that we're gonna be doing is a row of single crochet, but we will be decreasing because we want this to cinch in for the ribbing that we're gonna have. So the way that I'm going to be cinching in is I'm going to start off by inserting my hook into any one of the loops, we're gonna pull through, chain up one to secure. And then from here, I'm gonna be putting one single crochet into the next seven loops. So there's one, two, three, four, five, six, and then the last one right here is seven. Once when we get here, we're gonna be doing a decrease of two into the eighth and into the ninth loop. So into this one, we're gonna insert our hook, yarn over, pull through. Insert our hook into the next loop, yarn over, pull through. From here, we're gonna yarn over, 
pull through all three loops. And then that is how we're going to start off doing our decreases. We're just going to do this set one more time. So into the next seven loops, put one single crochet into each. So I have two, that's three, four, five, six, and then seven. And then into the eighth and the ninth loop, we're gonna insert our hook, yarn over, pull through. Into the next loop, yarn over, pull through. We should have three loops on our hook. We're gonna yarn over, pull through all three loops. And we're gonna continue doing this pattern all the way down. So seven single crochet into the next loops, and then into the eighth and ninth, go ahead and do your decrease of two. And then once you guys make it down to the end, slip stitch into that first chain that we made for ourselves, and then I'll meet you guys back. We've made it down to the end of our first row of single crochets where we decreased into every eighth loop. And now we're gonna go in with double crochets so that we can start off with our ribbing. But this first row of double crochet, we're going to do another row of decreases. So how we're gonna do that is start off by doing a chain up of three that counts as a double. We're gonna prepare for a double crochet, insert our hook into that first loop that we have with a regular double crochet, and then right after that, we're gonna be going in with a decrease of two. So how we do that, we're going to prepare for a double crochet, insert our hook into that next loop, yarn over, pull through, we should have three loops on our hook. From there, we're gonna insert our hook into the next loop, yarn over, pull through, we should have four loops. From here, we're gonna yarn over, pull through three, and then from here, we should have two loops, yarn over, pull through two, and that is our decrease. And we're gonna be doing a decrease into every other loop that we have, so let's do this again. Into this next loop, we're just gonna be putting one regular double crochet, and then into this one, we're gonna be doing our decrease, just like that. Let's do the next one together as well. We're just gonna put one double crochet into the next one, and then we're gonna decrease into the loops right after that. Once we make it to the end, we're gonna connect into that third chain with a slip stitch, and then we can start going in with our front and back post double crochets. So our first row of decrease double crochets is all finished up, and now we're gonna be going in with our front and back post double crochets. And this is actually gonna be exactly the same way that we went in with our side panel that we have connected to our front panel. So what we're gonna do from here is start off by doing a chain up of three. That counts as a double crochet. From here, we're going to prepare for a double crochet, and we're gonna start off by doing a front post double. So into this next post that we have, we're gonna be inserting our hook behind that post that we have. This is a front post. We're gonna yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. That is our first post all finished up. We're gonna be now, now we're gonna be doing the back post. So we're gonna prepare for a double, insert our hook behind our work. It's gonna go over this next post that we have. And from here, we're gonna yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. And then from here, we're just gonna alternate between front and back post double crochets going all the way around. And then we're actually just gonna keep going until we have the height that we want for our cuff. I'm gonna keep going until I have a total of two inches or five centimeters and counting the single crochet row and the regular double crochet row, that is a total of seven rows. So go ahead and get that done and then I'll meet you guys back. We are all done up with our sleeve detail and also our cuff. And at this point, you guys can go ahead and get yours done as well. But mine is obviously all finished up, so we are now going to start working on our pocket. So let me just flip this over really quick. I already have one of my pockets all finished up, so we're gonna be doing the next one together. How we're gonna start this off is start off by counting however many available loops that we have in our slit that we have. And remember in the beginning, I said that I was gonna leave myself 12 loops. So we're gonna start off by making a chain with our body color. That is the same amount of loops that we have in our slit, and mine is 12. Once we have our chain, we're going to block off that last chain, do a chain up of three that counts as a double crochet. From here, we're gonna prepare for a double crochet, and then insert our hook into that next loop that we have that we blocked off with our fingers, or the fourth loop from our hook. Once we have that, we're going to do a double crochet. And from here, we're just gonna be putting one double crochet into every loop that we have going back down our chain. Once we make it to the end, we're gonna do a chain up of three, flip our work, and then do more double crochets going back down that way. 
And we're going to keep going back and forth just like that until we end up having a length that we're comfortable with for the pocket. Also making sure that the length, since it will loop underneath, isn't too long so that we can see it underneath our cardigan. But I'm just going to go in with about 8.5 inches or 22 centimeters and that comes out to about 17 rows. So go ahead and do as many rows as you guys need and then I'll meet you guys back so that we can connect it into the cardigan together. So we've just gone in with our pocket and we are all finished up and the next thing that we're going to do is connect it over to our front panel that we have. So the preparation that I did for that was just making sure that the cardigan was facing us and then I also opened it so that we're looking at the inside of the cardigan for this pocket that we're about to work in as well. And once when we have this, this is going to be pretty simple. We're just going to take the little pocket length that we made for ourselves, take one of the ends, and then we're going to insert our hook in through one of the corner loops. And then also in through the top slit that we have for our pocket. And then from here, we're just going to sandwich those pieces together. And then once when we have that, we're going to be going in with our same body color yarn, inserting that onto our hook. We're going to pull through. And from here, we're just going to go across with a single crochet seam. So all that is, is we're going to do a chain up of one. We're going to insert our hook into that next available loop that we have in the front panel. And then also into the next available loop that we have in the back panel. And then single crochet. And then we're going to keep doing this all the way across. Once we get to the end, go ahead and cut and tie. And then we can attach the bottom and then the sides. The top portion of our pocket is now all connected. If you flip it over, you guys can see it's nice and clean along this side because the seam is on the back. But well, once when we have this, we're actually gonna take the pocket length that we have and then fold it in under itself so that forms the actual pocket. So all we're gonna do is take this loose end that we have and then just flip it inwards towards the bottom portion of this slit. And that's gonna be how we connect it. And then once we have that, we're actually gonna be flipping our panel back around right side out and then we can go in with our single crochet row. So as you guys can see, this is the bottom portion of our slit and this is the pocket that we just flipped inside out. And from here, we're actually gonna be going into the back loops of this front portion of our panel slit. So into the back loop, we're gonna be inserting our hook into here and then also into this corner loop in our pocket. We're gonna be inserting our hook into there, insert our yarn, pull through everything from here, chain up one. And then just do the first one together into this next available loop that we have in the front panel. We're gonna be going in through the back loop and then into the next available loop that we have into the back panel, single crochet. And we're gonna keep doing this all the way across. Once when we're done with this, go ahead and cut and tie and then we'll meet each other back so that we can seam up the sides of our pockets. This is what we should have for our pocket so far. The top and the bottom are all connected and now we just need to go in with our sides. And they're gonna be exactly the same for both so I'm just gonna show you guys how to do one of them. But the first thing we're gonna to wanna to make sure is to make sure that our pocket is laying the correct way. So we're going to want to make sure that our pocket is laying down towards our bottom border because that's gonna be the way that it naturally lays. And then once we do this, we are going to insert our hook into the loop that we have right in between this first row of double crochet and the second row of double crochet. We're not gonna be doing anything into this first one because this layer is higher than the next. If we sandwich the first two side double crochet rows, then it's gonna be a little bit bulgy. So in order to eliminate that, we are going to be inserting our hook into this loop that we have in between these two rows. Once when we have that, we're actually going to be inserting our hook into any one of the loops that we have along the side that's in the body portion as well, so that we don't have a gap on the corner. And then from here, we can also insert our hook into this first side double crochet row along the bottom portion of our pocket. And we're going to insert our yarn onto our hook and we're going to pull through everything that's on our hook. Once when we have that, we're going to do a chain up of one and then from here, this is all just a bunch of side double crochets. So we're going to put two single crochet into each of those side double crochets. And then once when we have that, we are going to chain up one and cut once we get to the end of this. Why do I keep doing that? 
and then we're going to do the same thing along the other side and then once we have this pocket finished up we're going to do the same thing for the other side of the pocket as well we've just gone in with our pockets and everything is looking great the last thing that we have to do is just weave in all of our ends If you've made it to the end of this video, give yourself a pat on the back because this was a doozy of a pattern and tutorial. But if you ask me, it was completely worth it. There is a pattern to follow along. The link is in the description if you want to grab that. Or you can enter this week's pattern giveaway by telling us what accomplishment you're most proud of. And that can be crochet or non-crochet related because we would love to get to know you guys better. But good luck to everyone who enters, and also, if you love this video, give it a thumbs up and let us know what you liked about it. But if you didn't like it, give it a thumbs down, but let me know how we can improve. If you love it, be sure to hit that bell so you know when there's new uploads for you. And also, be sure to share us on Twitter, Pinterest, Instagram, and Facebook. Our links are down below. If you want to buy this piece or any other piece on the channel, links to our Poshmark, Depop, and Etsy are down there too, along with tools used. Thanks so much for watching guys and I will see y'all in the next one.